remember i said in my last video that we will start building application using the web 3 js sdk hi there again my name is adijumo adivisayo and i'm a software engineer and a web 3 js ambassador this video is made for developers who are interested in learning and integrating web 3 js with its scan by the end of this video you'll be able to read information from the Ethereum blockchain in real time using JavaScript. To follow along, you need a basic understanding of JavaScript and Node.js. Don't forget to join our community and follow Web3.js on Twitter for more updates and support. Let's get it right again. This is a diagram that I've put in place to explain how we can communicate to the blockchain network. You can see here that I have JavaScript program. Of course, you can use any programming language, but for me, I'll be using JavaScript for this lesson through the JSON RPC. And RPC stands for Remote Procedure Core Protocol. And this is the Web3 interface. We'll be using Web3.js that goes to the Ethereum network and communicates to all the nodes, the account. Primarily, I'm going to explain this JSON RPC because some of us are not familiar with that term. Now, if you're coming from a Web2 background like me, I'm very sure you've seen something like this before. This is a JSON. And if you don't have any Web2 background, just think of when you submit that form on that website that tells you to log in. This is like what communicates to the backend. This is like what the backend understand as that request. Hold up. I'm sure we might not be familiar with this, but this is Solidity. I said it in my previous video that we have a programming language that writes on the Ethereum blockchain system, and that is Solidity. Solidity primarily writes programming language that the Ethereum blockchain system understand. All this, we might not need to stress because we have our web 3 js serving all those communication to the Ethereum network through the JSON RPC. And the JSON RPC is the API that represents all the data shared over the Ethereum blockchain, like talk to smart contract. Moving on to the coding parts right now. We create a new folder. I'm going to call my Web3 practice, free free to call yours, any name. Open up my Visual Studio code. Open the file I just created. The first thing I'll be doing is to install Web3.js. Because Web3.js enables us to communicate through the interface to the Ethereum blockchain system. After the installation, I will have to import, I mean, the basic way you import any JavaScript model, Web3. So once you open your folder, the first thing you want to do is to initialize the Node.js application using npm init. Then we can install our Web3.
okay after the installation because we will be doing import for import purposes you will have to have this type type as module create your new index.js file and import the web3 module as simple as that then we want to initialize our web3 to a blockchain system and i'll be introducing ethereum ethereum is a way for us to quickly access an ethereum node over a json rpc go over to your browser and type in ethereum if you don't have an account before sign up and log in it is very easy i have signed up before so i'll just go ahead and log in so like i've said we are trying to connect to the blockchain and if you gives us a url that we can use to connect to a blockchain system So I'll go ahead and do send request. I should get my ID here. Probably the network. But let me refresh again. Okay. We copy that. And we go ahead to our application we do the initialization so basically this kind of this line of code is saying a web3 js connect to my blockchain ethereum using ethereum if you're curious you can console log all the methods that we have on this web3 That will be node index.js. And there we have it. We have the account, the ABI, the personal, the net, the IBAN, the account providers, the hertz, the ETA, the units, the wallet. And these are methods that you need to familiarize yourself with and get to know what is happening on the ethereum blockchain system so these are the ways these are the methods that we can use to communicate effectively this is like the icta and let me just explain a little about this the win is the smallest you will see when we try to fetch a balance right now and then let's get over to ETA scan so using ETA scan right now I'm trying to use ETA scan to get some information on this ethereum blockchain system and as you can see ETA scan as simple as it is the ethereum blockchain explorer these are like latest transactions these are basic transactions that go on between an account another account i'm going to wait on this okay and this is like a transaction as you will transfer money to me from my account to my other account this page is seems unresponsive. Let's exist and try again. We 
we've been able to open the transaction details and we have the transaction hash. The transaction hash are basically the identifiers of that transaction. Coming from a Web3 background, you have your database system whereby you store. And these objects that are stored into the database have an ID. So the idea of having an ID that identifies a particular data in the database is what is there. Do we have a lot of things that mix up this transaction hash? We won't be diving that into that this video. We have the status, we have the block, the timestamp, the time from which account to which account, the value of the hectare, the transaction fee, and the gas price. You can always use this Web3 glossary to check any meaning of any words that you are not familiar with. Like, like the gas fee, for example, it's a compensation we pay to the miners. Miners are on the node, the Ethereum nodes generally, and you have to pay for every transaction to process the transaction to validate the transaction. And this has to be paid. So this is the gas price. Now we are going to be interacting with our Web3 to so our ICTA scan. I'm going to create a function. Try and catch. And then I'm going to do the balance. I want to try to get the balance. I wait. We are using our Web3, remember. And we are using an X. This is this represents the fact that we are trying to communicate to an Ethereum. And we have a lot of methods from this. Like right now, I'm going to try and get the balance, but you can see you can get the accounts, you can get the block, you can get the block method. I'm going to click on the account and I'm going to paste the account I've copied from. There seems to be an error. So, after that, we are going to console log what we are getting from this. And I'm going to use the plate, the trial, balance. Now, every the result Web3 gives us is always in win. And because we want to get this value in extra, like the unit of currency that we want to get the value from, you're going to say it's used. So, this method to change is from it's used. If you check more on that, I mean, you can always go and check more on that. And it's used helps us to actually convert. You can see from way to grain, if you want grain to hectare. So you're going to use it use and say from when because this value is going to be giving us in when take the balance. This is and we are going to give it a value of hectare. Simple as that. And I'm going to put X. I'm just going to console log this error if there's any error. Let's run our terminal. Okay. I didn't call this function, so I'm going to call this function. This is an IAF immediately invoke function. I just want to do this. Okay, there is an error.
I'm going to change this to a function expression. Call it get balance. Log. Okay, there's no need to log it. It's just call the get balance. And likewise, let's use another address. Okay, guess we good. Run the node, and yes, we have. As you can see, we have sixty five. Point nine zero eight. I'm going to refresh this because we are using a domain account that is probably receiving ITA. And here we have it sixty five point eight five six three two six six three zero. The exact balance. And that is how we communicate to the ITA scan. If you go back to this chart that I have here, we've used a JavaScript program and we've connected through the JSON RPC with our Web3 interface to the Ethereum network. And we've been able to fetch a balance from a network like Itascan. And that is what's happened here in the code, connection to the Ethereum blockchain system reading a balance from an account and getting the value from win to ecta now we've made our code into an endpoint where we can get any address balance of our choice from the slash balance and the address we get the balance as the response and no, don't forget to always import your Web3 JS library like this. This is the import. And yes, we have our local server running. If I go into the address, you can see this is the address that I've put in my params. And this is the balance of the address. Thanks for watching. In this video, We've covered how to connect Web3.js to ETSCAN and read real-time information from the Ethereum blockchain. Remember, we use JavaScript and Node.js to interact with the blockchain. I wrote a full endpoint later on, and the link is below this video. So you can check my repo on how I was able to run it on a port, as well as making the route dynamic so that you can also put any account of your choice and get the balance. Stay tuned for our next video, whereby we keep on diving deeper into building more application, interacting with the blockchain technology and more advanced functionality. Join our Discord community and follow Web3.js on Twitter for the latest updates and discussions. See you next time.